Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again with another LaunchBox tutorial. Today, I'm going to show you how to set up RetroArch achievements with LaunchBox and BigBox, obviously using RetroArch. Now, this is such an awesome feature, and we did cover this a while ago, but recently there have been some changes to RetroArch achievements, so uh, I figured we'd go ahead and go over it again. But yeah, I mean, it's still very simple to set up, and it's definitely worth doing if you're using LaunchBox and BigBox. Basically, it's a unified system to allow us to get achievements, kind of like Xbox or maybe even trophies for PlayStation, while playing our retro games using RetroArch. And there is full integration with LaunchBox and BigBox. Now, recently, RetroArch achievements changed how the retro score works. Users could earn scores whenever they were in standard mode or hardcore mode, but with the recent changes, they removed all the scores for the standard achievements, and they only provide a score for hardware achievements. So basically, what we're talking about here is hardcore mode inside of RetroArch. Obviously, no cheats, no rewind, and no save states, and this does make it a little more fair for everybody to earn achievements on kind of a hardware level while we're emulating our games with RetroArch. So like I mentioned, this is actually pretty simple to get set up, so if you're ready to get started, let's go ahead and do it. So first things first, obviously in order to use this, you're going to have to be using RetroArch, and it does support many of the systems that we already use with RetroArch, but you will have to have this set up with LaunchBox and BigBox. Luckily, we've got a super easy way to do it. From Tools, we're going to go to Manage, RetroArch, and if it's not installed, you'll have an Install button here. It's going to set everything up for you. You can also update or reinstall from here. So yeah, I mean, if you're using LaunchBox right now, chances are you've probably got RetroArch set up. So let's go ahead and get into the RetroArch achievement part of the video. From Tools, we're going to choose Options. We want to find Integrations, and you'll see we've got RetroArch Achievements. So with this, we will have to sign in with LaunchBox to let LaunchBox know when we get an achievement, and it can actually display all of that data for us in LaunchBox and BigBox, but we'll also have to sign in to RetroArch to let RetroArch know we're signed in there also. But in order for this to work, you will have to have a RetroArch achievement account. It's free to use. Right here, you can click on this link, and you can register your account here. Make sure you create a unique username and remember your password, because we will need this again. Once you've created your account and logged in, we'll need the API key. So in order to get this, we can actually click right on this link here and it's going to bring us to the correct page. Retrieve your API key. Now I can't show you mine, but I'll go ahead and open it up and just give you an idea about the location of it. From your profile page, you're going to scroll down just a little bit and you'll see keys, web API key. This is exactly what we need to copy. Copy that, head back over to LaunchBox, we'll input our username, we'll input our API key, and choose Test. And once you have the correct information in, it'll let us know that we've successfully logged in. It'll look something like this. So I've successfully connected RetroArch achievements to LaunchBox and BigBox, but now we need to set it up inside of RetroArch. So we'll go ahead and just choose OK from the bottom. And now we need to start up RetroArch, and there's several ways to go about this, but you know, since uh, my NES games are using RetroArch as the emulator, just head over here, right click, open RetroArch. And from within RetroArch, we're going to head to Settings, we're going to find a section called Achievements. We want to turn this on. Now from here, we're going to input our username and password. Now the password is the password we use to sign up for RetroArch Achievements, not the API key. So we'll go ahead and input both of those. We can turn Hardcore Mode on. This disables cheats, rewind, pause, slow motion, and loading save states. Achievements earned in Hardcore Mode are uniquely marked, so you can show others what you've achieved without Emulator Assistant features. We've also got leaderboards, something I always like to leave on also. Challenge indicators. An unlock sound will play when your achievement's unlocked. Some people might not want this, but yeah, I personally really do like it. And an automatic screenshot when that achievement is earned. So I usually just go ahead and turn everything on here, but you can pick and choose. It's really up to you. Once you've got all of this set up and your username and password entered correctly, 
I always like to make sure that I go back to main menu, configuration file, save current configuration, and I quit RetroArch properly just to make sure all of that is saved. So we've got it all set up in LaunchBox and RetroArch. All that's really left to do is start playing a game and unlock some achievements, but you might be wondering how do you find out what achievement you need to unlock? Well, it's pretty simple. You can actually head back over to RetroArchAchievements.org or we can just uh, choose a game. Let's go with uh, 1942. And from our Games Detail section, we can scroll down and see our retro achievements right here. So there's 21 to unlock for 1942 gives you an idea of what you need to do. Clear stage 3229, clear stage 2825, and so on and so on. You can go down the list and find out exactly what you need to do in the game. And uh, let's go ahead and unlock one. I'm going to go with Adventure Island, one of my favorite games. And once you start a game up, if you have everything configured correctly, you'll get a little pop-up in the top left-hand corner. It tells us how many achievements this game has and how many we've already unlocked. So all that's really left to do here is unlock some achievements. Now we'll see how I do with this one. So I've gone through and checked it out for this one. There are two achievements in this very first stage. Uh, first thing I need to do is get firepower. And it's up here. I gotta get on the skateboard first. Okay, so if I go kinda slow here, it usually pops up. There we go. Oh no, okay good. I thought it went off screen and I wasn't able to get it. But yeah, as you can see, we got that pop up in the top left hand corner, playing with fire. Really cool to have this with your retro games. And I believe the second one here is just finish the first stage. And you know, if I don't make it, I'll just uh, chalk it up as a loss, but we'll see what happens. This firepower and this fairy does make it a lot easier. But these jumps up here, um, you know, if you're not used to playing this game, the fire button is also the run button. So if you do want to catch up speed and shoot at the same time, ah, I knew that was going to happen. Oh, well. Okay, so we'll exit this one. I'll show you that achievement inside of launch box that we've unlocked. And as you can see, when we exit the game, would you like to save your one screenshot of Adventure Island? That's when I got the achievement. We'll choose yes here. And like I mentioned, we do have full integration. So our achievements that are unlocked will show up over here. We can also take a look at all of the achievements we need to complete per game. So yeah, this is actually really awesome. Pretty easy to set up, couple steps you need to take to get this ready, but it's totally worth it in the end. And hardcore mode does make it a little more interesting. But that's gonna wrap it up for this one. We hope you get RetroArch achievements set up with RetroArch, LaunchBox, and BigBox. If you have any questions, let us know in the comments below. And like always, Thanks for watching.